Hi guys, how's it going? So today we're talking about the brand new release of the mod that you can use on Alien Isolation so you can play in VR. Welcome to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and VR educational entertainment. If it's your first time here to the channel, very nice to meet you and a huge welcome back, of course, to all our regular subscribers. It's always nice to have you with us. Now, VR sometimes is all about having the goosebumps and there are various different VR applications that you can use for the HP Reverb D2, the Oculus Link and other VR devices that are compatible with PC. You play the character of Amanda Ripley as you learn that your mother's ship went missing several years ago, but was actually recovered. But first, before I give you my first impression, let's talk about how you can actually install the game to make it work in VR. Of course, after you purchase the game, you'll have to go to the GitHub link to download the mod. The previous mod didn't work for Epic Games, so this mod should work absolutely fine on your system, providing you have the right hardware. After you download the mod, which is free, by the way, all you have to do is just unzip the file, and then you'll see the .dll file there. Just drag it to the actual Alien Isolation main folder. Now, the game, by the way, is currently available on Epic Games for a really good discount, but for those who are able to download it for free a few weeks back, good on you. Now you can choose to use your keyboard and your mouse or also for me, for example, the Xbox S controller. If you want to learn how to hook up your Xbox S controller to your Steam VR, all you have to do is go into the description below the like button where there's a link that will redirect you to another video which I uploaded not too long ago. Now before we can actually launch the game in VR, there is one more thing that we need to do first. First, load the game from the .exe file and once it's loaded, you'll see there's a main menu there with an option called Mother VR. Now you see a number of options there. Choose VR Runtime and then decide whether you're going to be using your Oculus Link or another PC VR device. And once you've made your choice, don't worry, everything's just going to close up. It's absolutely normal. Okay, so now we're ready to go into VR, but you need to follow these steps carefully, otherwise you might have some trouble. For those who have an HP Reverb D2, for example, make sure that you launch the Mixed Reality software first, then go into All Apps and search for Steam VR. Once you've found it, Click on the Steam VR and then let yourself be redirected to the Steam VR home. If, for example, you cannot launch the Alien Isolation game from Steam VR home because it's not in the list of games there, all you have to do is go back to your .exe and launch it from that file. But make sure that Steam VR has been enabled first because if you don't, what's going to happen after you launch the game, you'll have a pop-up that will come up telling you that the DRL file is in the right place. However, you need to launch SteamVR first. But assuming that you follow the steps properly, what you'll notice when you launch the .exe file is everything is going to go into VR automatically. And by the way, don't miss the next video which I'll be uploading to the channel very soon. Do be part of the notification squad if you haven't yet by enabling the notification bell after you subscribe. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about the settings and my first impressions of the gameplay. Now, when you launch the game for the very first time, it is advisable to change all your various different settings. There isn't a separate VR setting, by the way, because this is not a VR enabled game. It is a VR mode that you're using. Now, using the RTX 2070 with an Asus Maximus Hero 11 motherboard and also the i7-9700K Intel chip, I'm using all my settings to ultra or super high. The developers did a really good job on several different aspects of the game. I really like the level of detail on the materials and also all the various different volumetrics, including all the fog spewing out of all the various different tubes and the lighting as well with the shadows, which really changes as you move around inside of your location. I love also the fire, which is really well made. You don't see any kind of artifacts there. It's all nice and smooth and it really provides a great atmosphere to the gameplay. The talents that are used inside of the gameplay are actually pretty decent. The voiceovers and the type of voices that are used to actually create the atmosphere as you're talking to the various different characters are pretty decent. The animated movies that you'll be watching as you go from one scene to another scene are also really well made. I really think that the rendering is top notch. The special effects inside of the game are also pretty well done. You'll notice that everything is completely in surround sound. So when you're actually moving your head from the right to the left, you'll notice that the sound effects will change the direction of the sound as well. However, there are a few bugs inside of the game that you may want to be aware of, especially when you're using the VR mode. And by the way, don't miss the next video, which I'll be uploading to the channel very soon. Do be part of the notification squad if you haven't yet by enabling the notification bell after you subscribe. The one setting you're going to want to play around with is going to be with your anti-aliasing. 
This is because the game has a lot of jagged edges which kind of gave me a little bit of discomfort after 10 or 15 minutes of gameplay. Everything is really super sharp which makes the jagged edges very noticeable. So that's why you're going to want to play around with those settings to just make things a bit smoother. The VR mode isn't perfect because it does have other issues including, for example, if you want to actually be able to enable certain things, for example, saving the game or logging into a computer or changing your clothes and all these various different things. Now, when I'm using the Xbox S controller, I have to press the button A and you're going to see that it's very difficult to be able to get to the point where you actually have to click on something for the action to happen. So do be patient and I find that basically crouching actually helps in order to be able to get to that action base button. I actually find that also there seems to be a little glitch with the point of view. If I'm not able to tilt the head using the controller to point at a specific direction, I have to kind of tilt my head more towards the left to be able to see straight, which I find a little odd at times. Now, even though it could be great for those who don't necessarily want to have a standing or who need to have a seated position, then this game is definitely going to offer you something quite different and quite immersive when you're using your keyboard and your mouse or an Xbox S controller. But for those who want complete immersion in VR, then you're going to have to wait for the G2 or your Oculus Link controllers to be patched to the next VR mode because at the moment, as I mentioned, it is limited to the keyboard and mouse or the Xbox S controller, which can, you know, dampen a little bit the VR immersion since we're more used to grabbing things and moving around with the touch controllers. Other than that, the game really offers a lot of immersion and I'm really looking forward to diving deeper into the rabbit hole as the story unfolds.